Hello, I'm Mr. Tie-Dye, and today we're going to be doing some shoes. I've had a bunch of people ask me just how I dye the shoes, and I've described it, but I decided to do a video just to give you a little visual on how it's accomplished. Uh, so the first thing, you have to find shoes that are cotton canvas of some sort, and I know that Converse, Vans, Keds, those are a few of them, and then there's a bunch of generic ones. Main thing is they be cotton canvas. Uh, I remove the laces from them, and then the next thing I do is I fill a basin with some warm to hot water and synthopol, and then I soak these in there. So this is how I do the pre-wash on these shoes. So I make sure that they get completely submerged in the water. I'll kind of splash them around just a little bit. Make sure you pull the tongues out so that they're going to get soaked also. So I squish them in there and then I just let them hang out upside down floating in the water for about 20 minutes. And what that's going to do is remove any type of uh, treatments that the companies may have done to make them stain resistant or whatever. Um, so soak them for 20 minutes and then we'll be back and I'll show you how I dye them. Okay, so I'm back. I've washed, I uh, did the pre-wash on the shoes by soaking them in this tub with Synthropol and after the 20 minutes I went ahead and rinsed them in cold water and now what I've done is I've taken a jug of soda ash, dumped that into my tub here and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drip these down in here so I make sure I pull the tongue out so that that's going to get coated in soda ash and then I just poke these down in there and let them float upside down and I'm going to leave them sit in there for another 20 minutes with the soda ash. So I'll be back after 20 minutes. Okay, it's been 20 minutes and the shoes have been soaking here so now what I'm going to do is spin them out just to get the excess soda ash out and I use that term a lot so I'm going to slowly put a video together on the different tools and tips and tricks and the terminologies that are used in tie-dye and just what they mean. So when I say spin out the excess soda ash, what I mean, I'm going to use the wash machine. And what I do is I put these in here so that the canvas part is facing towards the drum. So I just stick both of them down inside. I just pull them out and just kind of let most of the soda ash drip out of them. And once that's done, then you just drop them down in there. I'll get this out of the way. So I just set them opposite each other down inside the tub here and then you can just close the lid, put it on spin cycle. But the other thing, you want to make sure if you're going to do any spinning out in your washer, you want to make sure that it doesn't spit water during the, the, rinse, uh, the spin cycle, which that's something that some washers do and some don't. So if that happens, you can turn your water off back here. Uh, another thing, if you set it to the end of the spin cycle, sometimes that alleviates, uh, it stops spraying water at that point. But one way that you can check that, um, if you have one of these washers that has a little tab here on the lid and a little hole, that's there's a switch in there that turns this on. So I've already got the washer turned on back here on spin cycle. And if I take just a Q-tip or a stick or something, poke it in that hole, then the washer comes on and at that point you can look and see if water is spraying out. Usually if it's spraying out it'll be right here just spraying into the tub and it just helps do an extra rinse when it's doing a spin cycle. Well we don't want that when we're soaking, spinning out soda ash because the water spraying in there is going to dilute the soda ash that we've just soaked in for 20 minutes. So that's one thing you want to check before you actually use your washer and if that's the case then you can sometimes set this to the end of the spin cycle instead of at the beginning and usually by that point it will have stopped spraying water because your washer needs to spin all the water out before you put them in the dryer. So that's one thing to check before you do this. So I'm going to go ahead and spin these out. I usually just put it on for the full spin cycle here and spin them out and that way then the shoes will be just barely damp. So after that I'll be back and we'll start dyeing these things. Okay the shoes have been spun out so they're just barely damp now. So what I do when I start dyeing them first thing is I like to get this tongue 
out of the way so I usually kind of put a little bit of a crease in that you can wrap a rubber band around it um, but I usually will just put like a clip on there and that just kind of holds that there in the center so it's not touching the sides of the shoe as I'm working here and then I have my colors lined out here and what I do is I just pick them up and I start coloring just kind of randomly and I'll start at one side and I just work my way all the way around so that's what I'm going to do here and the dye is going to spread uh, any dye that I get down on the rubber, I try to have a wet rag handy to wipe that off immediately. And then I just color randomly. And these little bottles put out just a little bit of dye, so that allows me to just kind of put it on. When it spreads a little bit, then I add my next color. The main thing to be aware of is like when you're working with orange, um, there's only two colors that aren't going to cause you know it to turn to brown and that's the fuchsia and the yellow so whenever I put orange on I try to make sure that I surround it with some yellow and orange on there let's see if I can zoom in just a bit so other than that the rest of the colors tend to mix pretty well so I just go along and just randomly color in there when you're doing the rainbow you can kind of go down the road here and just pick up each one of them and just add a little bit except for the purple and the yellow aren't going to mix so I'm not going to put that one down I'll put a little bit more of the fuchsia here so you just keep changing your colors around and you just keep coloring until the whole shoe is done and then I set these aside to batch for 48 hours And I'm not really squirting the dye. I kind of tip the bottle until it's level. And then I can, I mean, right here, I can see the dye just start to well up right there. So I touch that to the shoe and just kind of let the dye come out. So I'm not actually squeezing the dye out. Because if you do that, then you're going to get way too much dye on your shoe here. And it's going to spread everywhere. So the small tip bottles and I'll put a link to these just in case you don't haven't seen it but I'll put a link to that down in the video description uh, I buy these on Amazon uh, they hold four ounces so that's nice and then I just keep working my way around I just kind of look to see what colors I haven't used recently you can use as many as or as few colors as you like and just keep adding them and so you get around I just do them in random shapes here so it's just kind of fun each shoe is going to turn out differently because you're just letting the dye flow on the canvas here and you don't have to dye it in a random pattern like this sometimes I'll do stripes or uh, other designs I've even done uh, the dye painting on these and in that case what I'll do I'll prep the shoes in the same fashion but instead of spinning them out and then going right into drying I'll go ahead and set these out and wait until they're completely dry and then you can mix up the the dyes with your thick water and I'll use a washable marker draw a design on and then you can just paint the colors on that's how I do the dark side of the moon shoes so there's lots that can be done with adding colors um, once I get both sides done all the way around then I'll go ahead and dye the center part here and I just do the same thing I just kind of add colors in there 
the same random manner. It's a little more awkward just because it's on the inside of the shoe here so you have to just kind of work your bottles around to get down inside there. That's another reason to clamp this clamp this tongue here just to kind of hold things in place. If you have to clip the thing just right on the canvas then make sure you kind of squeeze die in there or just readjust your clamp. You can just pick it up and move it to a different location so that you can die underneath the clamp. Okay, now once I have the tongue done, then what I do is I go back over and I can see, I don't know if you can see on here, but I can see some of these little white fibers sticking up in the shoe. That just means that the dye has soaked in. Since these are made from canvas, there's a, a thickness to the fabric. So I put the dye on and it was good, but then it slowly soaked down inside. So now what I'm going to do is go back over and just... I just put another coat of each color on and in this case I'll just pick up one at a time and go along and every place that I have the fuchsia I'll just add a little bit more fuchsia to it. You want to make sure you don't add too much because then it'll get kind of sloppy but I like to add just a little bit especially if I see those little white fibers sticking up that just means that the the dye has soaked down inside the fabric and it just needs a little bit more otherwise the colors will just come out just a little bit light it's not that m much of a difference but when you hold them side by side with another pair you did this way you can tell that that's different and the same way with the pre-washing uh, I've been doing shoes now for 15 years and I've tried all different methods of applying the dye and doing a pre-wash or not pre-washing and I find that it just gives you better colors if you pre-wash and if you add a second coat of dye to them. If you try to put too much dye on in your initial application, then the dye wants to spread and your little spaces are going to get too big before you can get a nice detailed pattern in there. A random pattern. So... For me, I find it just works better if I just add one quick coat and then go back and add the second coat. And then you can kind of add it where needed. I mean, if the color looks really good in a place, I won't bother to add more to it. It's just when I can see that it's gotten lighter or those f little white fibers are sticking up, that's the times when I will add more dye to it. And as I add this dye on here, I can see that it's getting darker. I don't know if you can see the difference in this green dye right here where I've added some more. And over here, I haven't. You can see that, well, if I can hold it right, that it's not the same darkness. So that means that this dye has soaked down inside, so it just needs a little touch up. Okay, and the tongue, usually it's fine. If I see some white fibers, I'll touch it up, but usually it's it's not as thick uh, as the rest of the shoe, or it just doesn't seem to need as much. So on the tongue, I'll go in and take a quick peek and touch up spots if needed. But once that's done, then I set this in the tub and batch it for 48 hours. So I'm going to go ahead and dye the other shoe, but you guys don't need to watch that because I'm going to do this the same way. Like I say, the main thing is to have a rag handy, so if you get any dye on the rubber, you wipe that off. Um, and be careful of which colors. Don't put you know, purple in next to orange or yellow because you're going to have brown where they touch together. So just try to sequester the orange inside there. But all the rest of these, I mean, like these colors here, they all, if they mix together, they're going to be fine. So the orange and the yellow, the main two that I watch to make sure what I put next to them. Other than that, um, I'll be back and I'll show you how I do the washout on the shoes. And I think that's about it.
Thank you for watching my videos. Please give them a like, a thumbs up, and share them wherever you want. Have a nice day. Okay, both of the shoes are dyed and they're ready to batch. And the other thing that I do with batching is I put them on a tub. They're on a rack here. And then I usually will add a couple rags that have been really that are really wet because I'm going to set this outside in the sun with the lid on it and I don't want the shoes to dry out too fast. So I just feel like the the wet rags in here and a little bit of water in the bottom of this tub is going to help create a humid condition and keep these shoes wet longer so the dye has more time to batch up. So I'm going to batch these for 48 hours and then I'll show you the washout process and then the final shoes in a couple days. Thank you for watching. Okay, so the shoes have now batched for 48 hours. Um, and looking at them, I mean, they're almost completely dry. So, you know, I tried to keep the area humidified by putting those damp rags in there, but they still dry out. But usually 48 hours is a good time frame for the dyes to set up. So for the washing process, I start out by rinsing them in the sink with cold water and that's going to help remove some of the soda ash before the the excess dyes start moving around so I just usually will just kind of give them a little bit of a, a rub down under the cold water just to get that soda ash moved along Then I'll turn the water up to warm, leaning towards hot. I don't like the water too hot when I'm rinsing the shoes because I've had the the soles of, oh well, here you go, see the, the label has come right off of the sole there. So the glue has just let go on that. Um, I've written the converse about it and they haven't gotten back to me about anything. Uh, I usually buy some of that adhesive spray and just glue that back down. But yeah, that's kind of a problem. Uh, and it happens obviously even in just warm water, but hot water is even worse on these. So, but once I'm done rinsing, then I place these into a tub that has soda ash, or Synthopol, and warm to hot water on it. So, now what I'm going to do is just let these soak once again upside down and I'll come back two or three times and change this water. Right now the water is clear but in a half hour or so that water is going to have some dye in it. So we'll rinse the shoes again and then I'll have more hot water or warm water and we'll keep rinsing them. Okay so you can see the dye that's coming out of these shoes down in there. I guess I had it just perfect there before. So what I'm going to do now is take these shoes, I'm going to rinse them and then put more hot water in and soak these again. But you can see the, the color of the water there is kind of dark and it's still just slightly warm. So we'll do this a couple more times whenever the water looks like it's about clear after a 30 minute soak then that's the time that I'll give them one final rinse and then I'll put them back in the washer, do a spin out and then I'll reshape the heels. That's something I usually do is I just kind of push on these heels. Sometimes they'll get bent in. You can kind of feel it. But while it's wet you can reshape that heel and then I set them out to air dry. And once they're completely dry then I'll have to do a repair on this as this here sole came off of there so I'll do some spray adhesive and get that repaired also thank you for watching my videos please give them a thumbs up like and share